And now, it's time for Southern California's Sports Fishing Voice. Let's talk hook up. For the next two hours, join Pete Gray, rock cod Rick Maxa, and this week's special expert guest for fishing information, new techniques to catch more fish, and the most current scoop on what's happening in the water. Let's Talk Hook Up is sponsored in part by Yamaha Outboards. Reliability starts here. By Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hook Up. And Shimano Rods and Reels. Fish with the best. Shimano. Get ready for the fastest two hours on radio with the hosts of Let's Talk Hook Up, Pete Gray and Rock Cod Rick Maxa. Good morning, anglers, and welcome to Let's Talk Hook Up. I'm Pete Gray. Rock Cod Rick Maxa is on the Royal Star. We'll probably hear from him today about some big tuna fishing he's doing aboard the Royal Star. And boy, do we have a great show for you today. Saltwater fly fishing expert Al Choki. Did I get that right? Quatroki. 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 We call him Al Q. Hey. And that's what you, you should call him, too. He's a great guy, an amazing, amazing fly guy here with some amazing stories. We've been not, talking nonstop about fantastic stories. We've got him for you today on Southern California's Sport Fishing Voice. It's Let's Talk Hook Up on the Mighty 1090. You've heard all about it. You know the anglers catching fish have it. So what's holding you back? It's a fact. Fishdope.com really does help you catch more fish and burn less fuel. Fishdope.com is the only fish finding service with a spotter plane along with a crew of top anglers on the water almost every day that report actual locations and catches. You can get daily catch reports from Point Conception to San Martin Island 365 days a year. Fishdope.com is for everyone. Whether you have your own boat, fish on your friend's boat or a sport boat. Fishdope.com has online planning tools, moon phase, tides, hot bite icons, and more. So bottom line is, if you don't have Fishdope.com, well, you're probably missing a lot of bites. Membership costs less than $50 of gas, and that's for the entire year. That's right, one year. What a bargain. Plus, use the special code to save $20 on a new Fishdope.com membership. Check it out today. Fishdope.com. Catch more fish, burn less fuel. Here's John Ireland. For Rancho Leonero. You know, the ranch is unique. It's one of the few places in the world where you can still drive ATVs up the beach. We have fishing from the beach. We have dive trips that we run to Pomo in a number of different spots. Kayaking, of course, has been real big. We were one of the first hotels to introduce kayaking. The ranch is small, you know, it's intimate, it's 34 rooms, so everyone gets to know everyone. The old saying, where everyone knows your name. Well, truly at Ranch Lanero, the employees do know pretty darn near all our guests' names. And what's even more interesting is most of the guests know each other's names. Very personal, very intimate, and a special, special environment. Two miles of beachfront, a mile on either side of the hotel. Ranch Lanero is really the last of the old-style Baja fishing resorts. 1-800-646-225. 1-800-646-BAHA and RanchoLeonero.com I'll personally guarantee your best fishing experience and vacation at Rancho Leonero. Who's going to be more successful? The guy with a state-of-the-art fish finder and the latest sonar technology? Or the guy who wastes time looking for fish the old-fashioned way? Smart fishermen know how to embrace technology. And no one understands technology better than your San Diego County Ford dealer. The new F-150 is the only truck available with Pro Trailer Backup Assist. The most advanced, most efficient way to back a trailer ever. It's just one of many high-tech features you won't find on any other truck. Ford is also the only brand available with EcoBoost, a twin turbocharged engine that offers impressive fuel economy without sacrificing power. In other words, Ford trucks just flat out work smarter. So whether you're on the road or on the water, don't let technology pass you by. Come in now and get a clearance price on a new high-tech 2017 F-Series pickup. Visit your nearest San Diego County Ford dealer today, Ford. That's California smart. Learn more at buyfordnow.com. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090. Pete Gray here, and I have a great guy sitting across me in the studio here. We're just talking nonstop. Al Q, uh, saltwater fly fishing guy. Good morning. Good morning, Pete. It's good to be here, pal. Great to have you. You've been here before, and uh, just fantastic being able to talk about the alternative way to catch it, fish in the saltwater, right? Exactly. I mean, a fly rod is just another tool. It's not the uh, the end all. It's uh, I, I I try to tell everybody you know it's just another way of of experiencing the passion that we all love is is using a fly rod. Yeah. Well, you're what's cool about fly fishing is 
it it brings a new challenge to anybody that's 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 a hardcore angler. Exactly. I mean, the reason I got into fly fishing is because I wanted to challenge myself, and I, it was really cool watching people catch these amazing fish on these really crazy contraptions. Like it was, it's like glorified hand lining, really. Yeah. You know. So I you know I read everything I could, and I I got some really great mentors early on, like Nick Hersione and Lefty Cray and all yeah. those guys, and. And I, they just put me on a track that it was like no stopping. I just kept going straight, straight ahead. I always wanted to fish salt water, and I always wanted to run to the beach. And that's exactly what I did when I got my first fly rod. Now, you're originally from the East Coast, right? That's correct. Where salt water fly fishing is bigger than it is out here. You know, it, it is, but they don't have the season we have here. Like, we ha- we can do it all year round here. Yeah. But absolutely, they, what they have back east that we lack is they have the tremendous estuary system that, that supplies all the amazing bait fish that come spilling out of those bays and all the big game fish pin them against the beach during the fall migration and, and even in the spring. So they have they have um, a couple of months of amazing uh, fly fishing action. But only a couple months. We have 12 months. We have we have 12 months where you really can fly fish 12 months around around the, the year here in California, whether yeah. you're inshore or outshore or even in the in the urban rivers that yeah. we have. Yeah. So let's talk about the opportunities here in Southern California for fishing. Let's start on the beach. Yeah. Well, you know. It's the the beach fishing has been really really good. Uh, unfortunately, the last couple of years, I'm I'm gonna, not going to be very honest with you. It's been slow. Um, the El the El Nino the, is kind of like screwed things up for us a little bit on the yeah. beach, and even the spin guys are saying it. It's been a little bit slow. But I'm hoping now. The Corbina, you know, no Corbina, it, it, Corbina's still around in the summertime. They they haven't really been affected. I mean, it's not as good as it was ten years ago. Uh-huh. But there's still a lot of corbina around. I'm talking about the winter perch we used to get. Oh. You know, those big, nice runs. We get those pan size, plate size perch. Sure. They're getting them up north, you know, like above Ventura. But we haven't really seen them in, the, in about two or three years down here. So I'm hoping that gets better with the colder water. Yeah. And the, and the water has definitely changed dramatically. I spent a lot of time surfing in the water this week. And you can really notice the kelp coming back big time That's around right. Point Loma. Water conditions are back in the... High 50s, low 60s, which is pretty more typical for this time of the year, versus last year, it was in the mid-60s 60s. still yeah. at, 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 in December. That's so absolutely right. Very, very different right now. So we're this winter could be the, the changeover, huh? I hope so. I hope so, because uh, I, I, I'm going to actually start fishing a little bit more up north this year, just because I want to try to get into some of those those better, better size perch. Yeah. But uh, um, guys are starting to pick them a little bit down here, but it's not as good as, it, like I said, like the last two or three years. We were getting monster fish about four years ago that were like, you know, 16, 17, 18-inch perch, and I haven't seen them in a while. So. Wow, and fun to catch, and you can catch a lot. Yeah, yeah. If you get into a, a good school of them, uh, it's it could be nonstop action on the tide. You know, everything's tide related. But and we we were fishing a couple of guys with, which searching for fish with Lucky Crafts, and they were getting two at a time. Wow! So. Wow! In abundance. Yes. Yeah. So a lot of people are kind of intimidated by fly fishing. Why do you think that is? Well, it's not like you could just grab a fly rod off the shelf and go out there and have a great time. It's something that you have to learn to do. It's, it's, it would be as similar as me trying to pick up a tennis racket and starting to play tennis immediately. Yeah, you got to figure out how to how to do it. And with fly fishing, um, the big obstacle is it's the casting. Yeah. So you have to learn the techniques on how to cast. But really, is it any different than picking up a, a conventional rod or a sp- uh, or, or a spinning rod and I mean, it may be a little more technical, but you have to learn too there, there that, too, right? That that's true. I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna throw you know a lure with a conventional reel, there's absolutely a learning curve there. But with the fly thing, it's like you're not throwing the weight at the end of the line. You're throwing the line as the weight. So in order to get the line to 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 leave the tip of the rod and and unroll to the target, you have there's a certain technique. There's a you know, and that that needs to be. Uh, to be taught and practiced. Yeah. Uh, and a good fly t- uh, fly uh, fishing uh, casting instructor in as many, many uh, clubs and as many um, uh, fly shops around, up and down, will, will, will definitely help you do that. Uh, for example, I first learned to fly cast from the San Diego Anglers. They teach a free clinic every weekend over at Lake Murray. And uh, simple, they, there's guys down there that teach you how to do it. And then if you want to take the next level, you teach a program. Yeah, me and Jim right? Solomon do a thing called the Fly Zone, but it's really, we really gear it towards guys that are, uh, well, it's for everybody, beginners, intermediates, but we really, we really love the guys that are taking the big exotic trips, and they're kind of a little bit hesitant on what they're getting into, and we can kind of give them the types of casting uh, experience that they're going to have right, off, right out of the boat. When they get, when they get out off the plane, 
usually what happens is a guide, they're going to be with a guide, and the guide will will have to kind of give them a learning curve. The guide's going to have to basically the first day show them what's going on, the second day maybe have them fish a, a certain types of casts. By the third day, they're fishing. But, by, but the classes that we do, we try to get them. As soon as they get off the airplane, the guides love us because the guides are ready to fish. They're ready. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that applies, not, I mean, your saltwater specialty, but whether you're going to Katmai Lodge in Alaska, it applies to that too, Absolutely. Right? My, my, my partner, Jim Solomon, is an amazing freshwater uh, fly fisherman, so he's got that, all that fly, all the freshwater stuff covered. Yeah. But you're a saltwater guy. I'm a saltwater yeah. guy. Yeah. So talk about some of the fish that you've caught in the, let's, let's start in our waters here. Like some of your, like, well, was a, good a, one. Couple, a couple of years ago, I, I, I had an amazing day, which I think you know about. I um, know, yes. it, it was in, in Palos Verdes. I was with my, my good buddy, John Whitaker. And, uh, you know, John's an amazing fisherman as well. He's, he's a world record holder. And we were looking for a big fish. It just, you know, we was looking for a big calico. And uh, we, we, we were in this one spot, and um, we, we couldn't fish this place for eight years because it was so kelped in. Wow. We just couldn't get in there. But the El Nino came around. And it kind of opened up the door a little bit. So we, we went into another buddy of mine who who goes in there with plastics, and he, he's a pretty hardcore guy. He had been catching some nice-sized fish. So we knew there was some good fish in there. We were in there. I was trying to get a record. And I just remember that morning, uh, like, nothing happened. We got there, and, like, it was just it was just like dead. dead, like an hour and a half. And John's looking at me going, what's going on? I said, dude, we're here for one fish, man. Let's just stay the course, you know. And uh, we rolled up on this one big boiler, and John says, I'm going to be – he was in the front. I was in the back. He took a couple of casts. He didn't get anything. I took a back cast. I didn't get anything. I looked over to my left, and I saw this tiny, tiny little boiler. And I just flipped the, the – I said, John, I'm going to take a cast here. I flipped it in there. I took the two strips, and woof, I, I got to eat. And this is the key to really landing a big calico is I didn't lift my rod to set up on him. I just pointed my rod, and I just held him because I didn't want to give him an inch. If, if I would have lifted my rod, he would have had six inches on me, and he could have totally wrecked me, because I was only in 15 feet of water. Wow. So I was holding on to him like a rock wow, really. And what I did was, once I felt I, I had the opportunity, I used my body. I turned my, with my legs. I turned and got my four or five or six inches. And then the moment of truth was now I had to, I had to grab the line and try to, like, hold him again. Once I did that, and he tried to, like, you know, dog me, I... I just held on to him. and I Didn't got, give him an inch. Didn't give him an inch. Now I had him. Didn't six, get him on the reel or anything. Nothing. I got him on my arm. I'm just holding on to dear oh, life. Okay. And I just used my legs and pulled him back another 10 inches. And then I felt his spirit kind of break. And then I started working him a little bit. Yeah. When he came up to the surface, my buddy John almost passed out. It was like, it was like, like nine and a half pounds. Nine right? and a half yeah, pounds. Big, big, big. Pounds. Wow. That's that but that's only part of the story because yeah. that was that that was the, the original. I think the original record on 12 pound was five. That was on 12 pounds. 12 pound tippet, yeah. Wow. It was like 5.4, I think, was the was the record. 5.8. And so then, right after that, uh, I, my buddy told me he had been there, the same spot, that Thursday. It was a Saturday that this all happened, and he saw these big school of white sea bass swimming around, and he's like, "Oh my God!" He, so he he tried casting at them, and they wouldn't eat. So he was moving. He took a cast. He was left to put his rod in the bucket. He started moving, and the the, bu- the rod went off. He ended up hooking one. It was a 27-pound white sea bass Ooh. on a fly. So when we went to look for the record calico, he said, "He said, Al, bring an intermediate line. Maybe we'll see the ca- these these white sea bass." Intermediate meaning what? Intermediate meaning a very slow sinking, clear line. Such as 250 grain. Uh, I would say it was probably a maybe 300 grain. 300 grain. Yeah. Okay. And so I had this rod set up on an 11 weight. And we went out. After I got that big calico, we started looking around, and we see this big school of white sea bass on the surface wow. in a circle. I thought it looked like they were spawning. I'd never seen it before. And we cast at them for about 45 minutes. They wouldn't eat. Huh. So finally, I said, you know, John, this is like a Discovery Channel moment. I'm going to just take some pictures. So I took pictures. I tried to regroup myself. And then I put on a, a little squid fly, and I whipped it in there. And the, the third cast, I got one to eat. Oh. And we, we, we landed. It was about 30, 36 pounds on 20. 36 on 20. Is it a record? That's a world record, yeah. Wow. So we got congratulations. Two, two world records. Oh, so the other one was a record, too. Yeah, about well, an hour and a half, we had two world records. Un- what a day. A day I'll never forget for the rest of my life. I, I guess. Yeah, what time of the year? It was, I believe, I think it was May. In May. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Just, and you know what? Time. I tell people it wasn't that I'm a better angler than anybody. I just had an opportunity, and I took advantage took of advantage it. Took advantage of it, exactly. yeah. Yeah, and that's the key with whether it's conventional fishing or fly fishing. When you get the opportunity to face you, 
you got to be ready. Advantage. You got to be ready. So, how do you get ready for an inshore trip off uh, off our local waters here? Um, okay, well, if I was to say I was going to go to Catalina, I'd probably bring a 10 weight rod, and you know, I make sure all my leaders were, were tied up. A lot of times, you could just use straight 20 pound test uh-huh. leaders, right to the fly line, right to the fly line. You know, maybe. And how would you tie that? Nail knot? I would use a, a loop knot on one end, which okay. would go to my fly line, and then on the other end, I like to use a. Um, yeah, like a like a loop, uh, not like a, like a non-slip mono loop. Okay. Which Lefty kind of taught me, mm-hmm. and it's about a 95% knot. It's really strong, and it gives the fly a lot of movement and allows the fly to sink faster. Ah. So I would I would do that, and I would just make sure all my equipment is is ready. You know what I mean? All I clean my lines, I, I test my knots. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I want anything that's at it, that's in my control to be in my control. Yeah. There are things that are going to happen that are going to be out of my control. But right. I want to at least take care of the stuff that, that I can. You don't want any failures when I you have that failure. kind of opportunity. Not when you have an opportunity to catch a nice, nice fish, a trophy, right? Yeah, for sure. One of the cool things about fly fishing is that you can create your own patterns, your own lures, and it's relatively easy once you learn the basic techniques especially for saltwater flies. Now, if you're going to tie a number 20 or 22 fly for a trout, it's a little more challenging and it, and yeah. it takes young eyes and, and a, lot of, a lot of concentration. But you brought in some works of art, basically, that, that you've learned to tie. And uh, how fun is it to, to, to create a fly and then catch a fish on that? Well, you know, I think that, to me, is one of the reasons I got into fly fishing because it it's the ultimate experience where you could actually – you know, it's raining out, it's snowing out, you could sit at a vice, you could create something really cool, and then you could go out and fish it and yeah. catch a fish on it. You yeah. know, how cool is that? Yeah. And and to your point, I agree with you. I envy the people that can tie 22s and 18s and all that stuff. That is just amazing. I like to tie things that are like, you know, on three-aught hooks, you know, yes. or, or things that look like shrimp, things that are, you know, a little bit more tangible for me. I, that little stuff, uh, I just, it's amazing to me. I just, I don't know how people do it. Yeah, yeah. I know. It's, it, it is, but it's, but it's fun. I mean, like. It is fun. Like. Like, you look at some of these patterns that you created, and you look, oh, man, I'm going to catch some bonita on that. And is there a more user-friendly fish in our waters here than uh, uh, for a fly rod than a bonita? I think the bonita in California is the ultimate fly yeah. rod fish. And for someone that, that it's learning to fly fish and wants to get, get into it yeah. for their first time, getting them hooked up on a bonita is a life changer. Yeah, for it's sure. Fantastic. What kind of rig would you take? Eight weight? Yeah, an eight weight would be perfect. You know, when, when we used to fish um, the, the Con Ed plant over at King King um, King, King Harbor, Harbor yeah. you know, th- an eight weight or even a six, you could get away with a six weight. But uh, an eight weight is a great all around saltwater rod for inshore. And uh, we used to use lead core, you know, with Ebenezer running line and and just pull on Benita all day long. There, it was great, great fun. Fly lines, fly rods, everything in fly fishing has just like in conventional fishing has come to the next level there is so much good tackle available and i would say you know especially like the ease of use of some of the fly rods and the fly lines right yeah the fly lines well back in the day when i first started we we used to make our own shooting heads you know and basically for the people out there that don't know what a shooting head is it's it's just like a spinning rod having a lure at the end of it you know the the lure is the weight and then the, the monofilament has no weight it's just a level line well, when we use shooting heads in fly fishing, the the first section of of fly line could which be is like, how long usually could be roughly about 27, 28 feet. Okay. okay, that would be the sinking part, and then that would be connected to like either a mono line or a, or an intermediate uh, running line, mm-hmm. which is just a level line. So you got to get the shooting head, the heavy section, outside of the rod tip before you can deliver it. And basically, you're just letting that thing fly. It's really no. It's not like you know, you're, you're on a trout stream trying to lay down a nice, you know, soft cast. You, you really want that thing to just go out because you want to throw for distance. Mm-hmm. And you want to sink it out. That's primarily what we use here in California, and 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 it, it, they vary in weights. So if I was going to fish corbina in the summertime, I would use maybe 150 grain or 200 grain shooting line, sinking line. Okay. okay? If I was going to go offshore to Catalina, I might use a 350 or 400 mm-hmm. uh, grain sinking line because I want to fish deeper. Yeah, yeah. Fun. I mean, there's so much to talk about. And I know out there you have questions because I have a lot of questions for Al Q here. And if you want to join us, toll free 877-792-1090 or 858-457-1090. And boy, do we have a great prize for one lucky caller today. One lucky caller today is going to get a really great combo pack. First, you're going to get the 
Come Fly With Me custom T-shirt by Al Q. Tell us the history on that T-shirt. Well, it's just it's a fun little logo I did. I, I'm a big Frank Sinatra st- uh, fan, and, and being able to, to say, come fly with me and put it on a T-shirt with, a, with a kind of a cool-looking fly is uh, something I, I, I just love to do, and I'm glad I, I, I made a nice design. Yeah, it's a beautiful design, and you'll enjoy it for sure. And to go with that beautiful custom T-shirt by Al Q., we're going to give you a handmade Anza fillet knife. This is the ultimate fillet knife, courtesy of Anza Knives. It's a, it's the best fillet knife that I've ever used. It's a handmade uh, uh, carbon steel, holds an edge better than anything you'll ever use, and, and also takes an edge better than anything you use. But that's courtesy of Anza Fillet Knives. And, again, 877-792-1090 or 858-457-1090. And when we come back... Your phone calls and more from Al Q. Stay tuned. This is Southern California's Sport Fishing Voice. It's Let's Talk Hook Up on the Mighty 1090. Everyone likes special treatment. You know, kind of feel like a VIP. Well, that's how our listeners are treated at Poway Valley Collision. I have personally heard of several stories of how well our friends Jim and Mary take care of their customers that we sent them. Poway Valley Collision is worth the drive from anywhere in the Southland. We know you may not need them today, but when accidents happen, it pays to go to Poway Valley Collision. And listen to this. Our listeners get a special discount that can save you hundreds of dollars on your car or truck repair. Just tell them you listen to the show and you get the deal. They work with most insurance companies, including Auto Club, Met. Life, Wawanisa, and more. Just bring your car or truck to them and let Poway Valley Collision do the rest. I have had my truck repaired at Poway Valley Collision and the job was perfect. So get your vehicle fixed right at Poway Valley Collision. Tell them you listen to Let's Talk Hookup and they'll save you money on your repair. Poway Valley Collision, 14211 Garden Road in Poway. Check PowayValleyCollision.com. For East Cape Fishing, Jen Ren is known as the best. This is Mark Rayer. Great service, top quality equipment, including all accurate reels, Calstar rods, and Cibran electronics, has put my immaculately maintained twin-engine cruisers in a class of their own. For memories of a lifetime, just bring your hat and sunglasses, and we'll provide a fishing experience that will exceed your expectations. Our calendar's filling fast, so don't miss out. For packages, two live webcams, a weekly fishery report, and more, check out TeamGenRen.com. We pick up at all East Cape Resorts, so let's go fishing. Alaska is one of the ultimate fishing destinations in the world. This is Rock Cod Rick, and every year the one trip I look forward to is Kingfisher Charters in Sitka, Alaska. My dad and I have been going for over 15 years, and I just can't wait to go again. No one does it better than Kingfisher Charters. They offer the best service, the most comfortable accommodations, fantastic food, the finest fishing charter captains in all of Sitka, and the ultimate value. Sure, I've been to others, but time and time again, nobody beats Kingfisher Charters. You can catch huge halibut bit like the ones we do almost every year and salmon well sitka is famous for some of the best runs in alaska we also get plenty of rockfish and huge lingcod and when it comes to fish processing the best in alaska is kingfisher charters and listen to this it's all included in your package in fact everything is included except the tips it's truly amazing how the kingfisher crew continues the quality of service they deliver year after year come and join me on the let's talk hookup trip in june or just go when you can kingfisher charters 800 727 6136 or check kingfishercharters.com. Have you been looking for a live bait hook that keeps live bait alive? Look no further than Japan's leading fish hook, Gamakatsu. It's the little things that make the difference, and Gamakatsu hooks drive the point home. With an absolute perfect bend and ideal barbs, your bait swims harder and longer. And when you get bit, Gamakatsu hooks bite back with a vengeance. All hooks are not the same. Go with Gamakatsu for infinite success. Gamakatsu, simply the best. Check Gamakatsu.com. It's time for our Power Pro 30-second seminar. And I tell you what, with Power Pro, what I like about it is the knot strength. You tie a knot with Power Pro, whether it be a John Collins knot, an Albright knot, uh, back-to-back uni, they hold and work with Power Pro. Yeah, the line is just not stiff. It's the perfect amount of round. It has good abrasion resistance, and it's just easier for connections than other types of line out there. Indeed, Power Pro at your favorite tackle store or check out PowerPro.com. I like rafting. I love whitewater. But I never forget that snow melt in the river can cause cold water shock. I wear a life jacket always. Anyone with me has got to do the same. Save the ones you love. A message from California State Parks Division of Boating and Waterways. Welcome back. Let's talk hookup on the Mighty 1090. Pete Gray here along with Al Q. Saltwater fly fishing extraordinaire guy here. Uh, lines are open. You want to have a chance to win that handmade Anza fillet knife, the ultimate fillet knife. And uh, a, a, a great T-shirt that Al created, Come Fly With Me. 
uh, in the spirit of one of my favorites, too, Frank Sinatra. Indeed. You actually worked with Frank Sinatra years well, ago. Well, I, I didn't work with him personally. I worked with the family. Yeah. And I, I've, we've done a bunch of um, album covers. I've, I've done a lot of music and, and movie stuff in my career. That's what you do. You do. That's what I've done in my lifetime, design. yeah. And I was very fortunate to work with the family, and I actually created the Frank Sinatra signature. So all wow. the signature stuff that you see, it has I kind of redid his signature for him, which is a kind of a cool thing. Wow, that's cool. Well, you want to get through 877-792-1090 or 858-457-1090. Let's jump on the phones and talk to Mike in Point Loma. Good morning, Mike. Thanks for getting us started here on Let's Talk Hookup. Morning, gentlemen. Love you guys. Thanks hey. for calling. Uh, a couple questions. The first thing is, I went on this thing. It was called the Reverse Day and a Half, and I don't know if other guys. I'm sure other people do it, but it was probably one of the best fishing trips we took. We went up to Palisades in the afternoon, and I got seven lobsters, and then we drove overnight to San Nicolas, and I got double limits of sheep's head. Wow! I mean, I awesome. was just so stoked. Plus ling cod and whitefish and everything. But because it was a reverse day and a half, we were able to get double limits. Probably the best bang for the buck I've had in forever. Boy, that's anyway, I, fun. I, uh, I fish a lot with uh, flies for bass and panfish and stuff like that. And you were talking about, you know, like a six weight. I have a six weight, a five weight, a four weight. But I don't have any uh, shooting head or lead line. When you fish the surf, are you wading out into the surf? Or are you up on a jetty looking for areas to fish? And what type of streamer are you using? Because you're not going to use dry flies, obviously. That's so correct. You have to use some type of streamer. And I was just wondering what type of streamer you guys uh, use. And I'll sit back and listen to the response. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Mike, thanks for the call. Appreciate hey, that. Hey, very hey, much. Thanks, Mike. Those are all good questions. So basically, you know, you, I would say you could use your six weight, maybe not all the entire year, because in the winter time we get some big swells. But when it lays down, the six weight will work fine, and you can probably get a fly line, an integrated shooting head, shooting head line. Uh, you can go to any fly shop and, and ask for an integrated shooting head. Probably in about a, a 200 grain would okay. work perfectly for you. And as far as the baits go, what about a stripping basket? Yes, very, very good point. We use we use something called a stripping basket on the, in the surf because we want to contain the line. Um, you know, if you put the line on the ground, it's going to go all around your feet. The, the waves are going to push it around. It's it's you know the fishing in the fly fishing in the surf is not a really friendly environment, so you have to kind of try to control it as much as you can. And having a stripping basket. You can make one out of, out of a Tupperware uh, pan, or you can get them in the fly shops. They basically have little fingers in them to kind of hold your line so, they, so it doesn't twist and get into a big, you know. Something as simple as a dish. A, di- dish pan thing. Dish but pan. you want to yeah. put some heavy mono in the bottom of it, little fingers that stick up so it kind of holds it like hands, ah. right? So basically you have your stripping basket, you got your line, and then you asked about flies. Well, take, look at it just like you're fishing in fresh water. Whatever the fish are feeding on. Is what you want to use. So if, if I know there's, there's grunion, if, I, if I'm going to go to the beach after a grunion run, I probably would tie little flies that look like grunion, little clouds or minnows that look like grunion. Or if I'm fishing for corbina in the summertime, I'm going to use a fly that represents a sand crab, maybe a surfing merkin or something similar to that. Um, you can go online. You can look up. There's lots of uh, good you know, information online about these types of things. Or now, just yeah, visit you your local blog, shop. Right? I do have a blog. Um, it's it's alquatrochi.com. WordPress.com, and I put up all sorts of interesting things there. You could always ask me questions, um, but also you can get any of these answers at any of the local fly shops as well. Yeah, there's several good ones. I mean, not as many as we'd, we'd certainly hope yeah, there Yeah, the are. ones I would, the, we have the, uh, the the fly stop here in San Diego, then there's Marriott's shop in Fullerton, which is a great shop, and then we have um, the Fisherman's Spot up in Van Nuys. It's another great shop. So. And his and hers in Newport. And his and hers in Newport. Yeah. yeah, Frank's, Frank's, Frank's shop, his and hers, is, is really great, too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Any of those guys would, uh, They'll all help would you love out. to get you involved. And I really, really, really try to support the local fly shops. As yeah. Well, as best Where, the, I'm not familiar with the shop down here. The Fly Stop. Yeah, it's kind of uh, in a little industrial area. Okay. But just Google it. You'll, you'll see it. All right. Yeah. Very good. The Fly Stop. All right. Thanks a lot for the phone call this morning. Some very good questions. That does free up. 858-457-1090. Open right now. Let's go to a great fly fishing destination right now, Rancho Leonero in Baja's East Cape. Talk to John Ireland. Good morning, John. Good morning, Pete. Good morning, Al. Good morning. 
Well, I'll tell you, it's been a beautiful week. We had the hotel closed on uh, Saturday. It was our last day, or actually Friday. And uh, but the weather's been just gorgeous. It was just flat as it could be all week last week, and uh, and the fishing remains very, very good. Water temps. 80, 81 degrees, and, and a lot, yeah, it's, there's lots of sardine around. That's the key. Uh, which, well, that's good for the fly guys for sure. When there's lots of sardine around, they use it for chum and bring the fish up. And, and it's been a problem in the past when we when we don't have the sardine for chum, it's, it makes it much tougher on the fly fishermen. As long as you've got the sardine, uh, the fly guys are going to whale. Uh, what's happened is uh, pretty much the same as Gosh, the last two months. The limit sea elephant, they're a little bit bigger this week. Every boat's limiting, and, and every boat really is coming in by 1 o'clock. Normally by lunch, all the boats are back in with limit sea elephant. This week, 15 to 30 pounds. Uh, uh, they'll come in with two or three Dorado, and, and, and the occasional nice 30, 40 pound bull. Um, there's lots of billfish outside there. They're, what they're doing is they're just passing over the bump in front of La Rivera, coming back from the uh, the yellow uh, tail or yellow fin, pardon me, are uh, off of Fraley's about um, 25 miles south. And so when they're coming back, they're trolling off the bump there in front of La Rivera, and just inevitably picking up a striped marlin, a lot of striped marlin. Inside, a lot of rooster fish. It's still really, really good fishing. And uh, I was looking at uh, iWindsurf.com, and the weather looks like it's going to be nice in the middle of the next week. So. Sweet. Very yeah, nice. Yeah. Well, late, sounds like fun season. time. Of course, Rancho Lanero will be reopening March 1st, right? March, March 1st, exactly. And, and yeah. now is not too early to make your bookings for prime time, especially like our tournament next June. Um, October has become an extremely popular month. May is a popular month. July. Make your bookings now, right, John? Exactly, exactly. You know what's happened, and I really think has changed the fishing force a lot, is, is Pomo Park. Yep. And uh, it's taken a while for it to really generate. There's just loads and loads of fish in there, and a lot of the tuna we're catching are around the outskirts, not in the park, but around the outsides of the park. The park's producing a lot of fish and bringing them out, and so it bodes well for next year. It sure does. For sure. I expect the same next year. So. Well, how do we make reservations, or we want to get on it? Thanks, Pedro. It's 800-646-2252 or a lot of photos on uh, RanchoLanero.com. Check them out. And i, I got to add, too, since we're talking fly fishing this morning, Rancho Lanero is a great destination for fly fishermen. You have a, your own guide that works out of there. Uh, yeah, Jeff DeBrown. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah Jeff's, uh, Jeff's a good friend. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Jeff does a great job. He works hard. He can cast for with a conventional, you know, he, does, he teases off the beach. And that guy can cast farther than anybody I've ever seen, a like hundred, a hundred yards at least. Yeah, he, I was trolling for for rooster fish out in front, but I was a hundred yard off the beach, and and he hit me with his teaser from the beach. I oh couldn't believe it on wow. my boat. Yeah, wow. yeah. Anyway, yeah, Jeff does a great job, and uh, and uh, and we catch a lot of marlin. I guess he's over at Mag Bay right now, kind of off the oh, off the track, and I guess they pick him one day. They a lot of marlin. Twelve. They, well, they released 12 striped marlin on fly in Mag Bay in one day. He was nice. talking about so nice. Well, he's great. doing good right now. I, I, I actually, I actually did Jeff's logo for him. Oh, oh did you? Yeah, great. that's cool. Yeah. He's, he's well liked and, uh, and uh, we're happy to have him. He's a good dude. Well, great, John. Well, nice to hear from you from Rancho Leonero. I'm sure you'll be checking in with us through the winter here. And again, when when somebody wants to come to Rancho Leonero, how do we do that? It's, it's 800-646-2252, and I'll call over the course of the winter. When these commercial guys are out there fishing a lot, I'll, I'll keep everybody posted. Fantastic. Thanks, John. Appreciate Thanks. that, and we'll talk to you real soon. Appreciate Thanks, the call. Let's go live down to the Royal Star. Co-host Rick Max is on the line. What's up, Ricky? Hey, what's up, Pete? How are we doing up there? Hey, doing great. How's the fishing on the Royal Star? Fishing continued. Uh, man, it's just great. Well, yeah, I couldn't. I sure wish you were down here with us. I know how much you like this too, and we're having a great time. Um, Paul taking really good care of us, and fishing continues, man. We uh, yesterday was our first full day on the grounds, and uh, that big fish, you know, quality over quantity was the same deal. I mean, we had quite a few fish. Don't don't, don't get me wrong, but another couple of real nice ones. Um, my my good buddy Neil, as you know, my boat partner, he had a 234 right after we hung up the phone yesterday, and. Bill Moore, who's a guy who's been doing long-range trips with Les Hawk Hookup for a lot of years, um, had a nice 200-pounder yesterday as well, and a bunch of fish. 
in the 180s and 190s. The quality down here is just, it's nothing short of phenomenal. We're having a great, great trip. Wow, fantastic. What about you? You started the whole thing off with a 200-pounder. How how did you follow that up? I had another one yesterday that was probably a buck 25, something like that, and and a couple of smaller ones, and had a small one this morning, and right now uh, Brandon from the tackle store is pulling on a real a real heavy one that we're anticipating will hopefully be a big cow when uh when they put the gas in it. But he's pulling on a real big one right now, and you know Neil had another fish this morning. It's probably buck seventy five, buck eighty. It's just things are going really really good down here. Wow. Now wait a minute, Brandon got a big one yesterday. Yeah. So I know we joked about it yesterday. He had that two sixty five on a talented twenty five and. I mean, he did a great job, and the equipment worked perfect. He had a Calstar 770 extra heavy, but certainly that would be the light end for a fish that large. And uh, so he fished heavier tackle most of the day, and this morning said, you know what, I'm going to put that lighter gear back in the water, and sure enough, he's, he's on a really heavy one again right now. So. On, on the Calica 25? But the gear is working flawlessly, so yeah, so far so good. Oh. He's getting his butt kicked a little bit, but he's doing a great job at it. That's his lucky reel on rod, so he better stick with it, right? Blake, Blake told him that exactly. He said, don't listen to all these other people telling you you need to fish every tackle. That's your lucky outfit. Put that thing back in the water. And we put a new top shot out this morning. He fired his second bait, and he's attached to a big cow right now. Wow, that's fantastic. Now, Ricky, is, is a lot of this fish skipjack fish, or how? You, what, what's the bait of choice? No, and I, I would say 90% of it is on the sardine. That, that 230 that Neil had yesterday was on a skipjack in the middle of the day, which is not all that common to have real big fish like that in the middle of the day, but uh, when we got that fish on board, he caught it on a skipjack, and then in its stomach it had another skipjack and a big rainbow runner and a bunch of chum sardines, too. It was a it was a glutton, so. Um, but, no, most everything else has been sardine fish. I know Brandon's big cow he's pulling right now is just a sardine on the fly line. Wow, fantastic. And that's on 100 pound? Yep, 100 pound. He's using 100 pound Seaguar Blue Label. And a uh, 6 Super Nautilus from Valmacatu. Wow, fantastic. Well, that's great stuff. And, and, and Ricky, uh, how many more days do you have to fish? We have several more days down here. I think we've got three more full days of fishing. So lots of good opportunity here still to go. I, I, I think this is going to be one for the record books. Oh, fantastic. Good weather, too? Yeah, I mean, it's perfect weather. It's it's very regular weather for, for down here on the Hurricane Bank. I mean, it's it's a little rocky and rolly, but honestly, that's good for the big fish. It kind of helps uh, helps lift you up and put the fish on the boat a little bit. It's certainly not uncomfortable, and uh, wind's probably 10, 10 to 15 knots. Pretty darn standard for down here. Sure. Very comfortable in the Royal Star. Very nice, very nice. And I, I, I know first time I was at Hurricane Bank was on the Royal Polaris, and Captain Steve Loomis came up to me and said, Pete, you're in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. You're literally out in the middle of the ocean, way, away, 200 miles from anywhere, that any point of land for sure. So it is truly out in the middle of the ocean. So, Ricky, keep getting them there. Congratulations on your successful trip aboard the Royal Star. And uh, we'll look forward to hearing all the stories when you're back in town. I guess you come back to Cabo on a week from yesterday, and then uh, you're going to spend a day in Cabo, and then... Uh, the following uh, Saturday, you'll be in the studio to tell all the tales, huh? You got it. You got it, buddy. I can't wait. All the crew misses you down here, Pete. Everybody says hi. Captain Paul's doing a great job. Nestor's in the galley chefing it up. The food's just been, as Royal Star tradition continues, it's just A number one. The, the whole thing's perfect, man. We're having a great time. Can't wait. And uh, can't wait to tell you guys the full uh, the full lowdown when I get back. Yeah, well, call us from Cabo next Saturday on the way in. And appreciate the call, Rick. Keep getting them. You got it, boys. Have a great show. We'll talk to you next week. All right. Thanks yeah. very much. All right. Captain Frank Lopresti, Royal Polaris Shogun. What's up, Frank? Oh, I'm just jealous of how much field research you guys get to do. It's it's our job, Frank. We have to go. I know. I understand. <laughs> hey, I just, want, I just wanted to let you know, RP and Shogun came in with sensational catches. The RP from an eight-day trip with a beautiful catch of Big Wahoo, Ooh. some very large grouper. Uh, and then also great, great fishing on the 90 to 170 pound yellowfin. Wow. And uh, yesterday I heard from Captain Russ on the uh, Shogun. He had fish from 100 to 170 pounds. And uh, uh, Roy had great fishing on that 100 to 150 pound fish. It just continues to go. And the big, big reason why I'm calling is talking about Hurricane Bank. In February, the accurate trip where everybody can, any person could book that trip and not have to have a rod or reel 
because Jack will supply all your gear for you. We have two openings. We recently had two cancellations, so we have two openings on that February 6th, 18-day trip, which has a fly-home option. Wow. Just wanted to get that in there, Pete, and I appreciate you and the show, and uh, it's great entertainment. Thank yeah. you. Thanks, Frank. And, and those guys are just, I mean, that great fishing at Guadalupe just is continuing. It got better, didn't it? Yes, it's just amazing, okay? Yeah, and so are there any spots available to go down there in the next month? Yes, there is on the Shogun. There's a few spots on December 15th, okay? Whoa, better jump on it, huh? Yeah, I would say it's a good opportunity, yeah. okay? All right, well, if somebody wants to go to Guadalupe on the Shogun or go to Hurricane Bank on the Royal Polaris, give us the phone number again, Frank. 619-226-8030. There's no one in there today. You can book online, but we're in there Monday through Saturday. All right. RoyalPolarisSportFishing.com or ShogunSportFishing.com. Thanks for the report, Frank. You bet. Take and, care. Bye-bye. And, ha by the way, happy belated birthday. <laughs> Thank you, Pete. All Take right. care. All right. See you later. All right. Phones are packing up. You want to get through? Here's your chance. 858-457-1090. Open right now. Let's talk to Mike and Rosemead. Good morning, Mike. Hey, good morning, uh, Pete and Al. Hey, it's kind of apropos you have Al on today, and uh, this month you're on the cover of the Tide calendar with that giant trevally. Yeah, Maybe that's you right. can uh, give a little detail on that. But uh, I also have a question for Al. Uh, I know you have probably a wide assortment of uh, fly, saltwater fly equipment. What brands do you use? And in the surf, because of the harsh environment and the the waves splashing up on your equipment, and do you use like a lesser expensive reel um, just for the local surf fishing? Thank you. Uh, good questions. Uh, you can use any type of reel you like. The, you know, the main thing is you're going to have to clean it. You want something with a closed drag system so that sand and stuff doesn't get in there. But if you have a reel that's not the greatest reel in the world, just try not to drop it in the sand because that's where you're going to have problems. And make sure you clean your, your equipment. I, I always clean my equipment after every time I fish the surf. I bring it into the shower with me. I strip my line out. I wash everything off, and then I'm good to go the next time. Because of the sand mostly, not necessarily the salt, but it's more the sand. It's both, the it's salt both. and yeah. the sand, yeah. Um, you just want to get all that salt out of, out of the reel. Um, and as far as uh, flies go, I, you know, I tie most of my own flies, but all the fly shops have great selections of surf flies. So you just need to go in there, and you can ask you know, what, what the best flies are for what the types of fish you're fishing for. I mean, I would say if I had one one fly to, fl to, to fish, I would use a Clouser minnow, a small Clouser minnow in, in olive over white or chartreuse over white or even tan over white. Um, that, that fly rides hook up. You're not going to run it through the sand. It's a simple fly to tie. It's a simple fly to buy, and uh, it catches everything. Yeah, very, very good. Good session. If you were to – so if you're into, into investing into fly gear, what do you, give us the ultimate – fly setup is it a six weight a seven weight an eight weight uh and are you going to put the money into the reel the rod the line or all of it uh if you're going to put the money into anything i would say it, it probably should be the, the the reel and the rod the reel and the rod yeah because that's that's really the workhorse of the whole system um your fly lines you can you can get fairly cheap you can make your own own shooting heads um you know any sort of medium arbor reel with Maybe, you know, 200 yards of, of 20 to 30-pound backing is going to work. Uh, again, a closed drag system would be great because it's going to keep everything contained. It's not going to damage the inside of the reel. Um, and then for a fly rod, you just want to use something that's a, maybe like a medium action, something that's not too fast because what happens is guys, want it, they want these really fast rods because they can throw tight loops and try to throw really like a million miles. But you really need to feel the fly line. So something that's kind of a medium flex rod um, and when, when I talk about these things it's really like it's almost like wine you need to go to a fly shop and cast the rod before you buy it whatever type of rod you get and today there's rods that are very, very inexpensive and there's rods that are very, really super expensive you could find something that's in your price range but you got to cast it because everybody's a snowflake everybody's different everybody's body type is different and you want to find something that feels right for you so that, that would be my best advice. All right, good advice. Hey, thanks a lot for the phone call this morning. And when we come back, more great information from Al Q, talking fly fishing and more here on Let's Talk Hookup, Southern California's Sport Fishing Voice on the Mighty 1090. 
Alaska's Katmai Lodge is a world-class wilderness fishing paradise on the banks of the famed Alagnac River. You'll fish for all five species of Pacific salmon, king, sockeye, chum, coho, and on even years, pinks, plus trophy-sized rainbow trout, arctic grayling, and dolly varden, both in the Alagnac and the nearby waters. Katmai Lodge's U.S. Coast Guard and CPR certified guides are fishing fanatics and know how to help you reel them in. They are exceptional teachers and ensure you have days that are fish filled and fun with freshly prepared snacks and barbecued lunches on the river. Back at the lodge, there are fireside appetizers and refreshments each afternoon, as well as fresh, delicious meals prepared by their exceptional chef. Elevate your visit with a quick flyout trip to Brooks Falls in Katmai National Park for world renowned bear watching. For the best fishing adventure ever, visit katmai.com. That's K A T M A I.com. When you put on a pair of Maui Jim sunglasses, the world begins to look different. Colors are more vivid. Contrast is clearer. Details are crisper. Wherever your vision leads you, beauty follows. With polarized lenses that eliminate glare and enhance color, Maui Jim sunglasses won't change the world. They'll change the way you see it. Color. Clarity. Detail. Maui Jim. When bad weather and rough seas send other boats back to the dock, SeaKeeper allows you to fish longer and fish harder, even in the roughest conditions. Don't believe it? Just ask those that have put them on their boat, like Captain Pete Grosbeck and other professionals. Fishing in the trough with SeaKeeper basically eliminates the trough. SeaKeeper's newest offering, the SeaKeeper 3, is optimized to eliminate up to 95% of boat roll on boats between 30 and 39 feet. Even better, this gyro is so small it can fit inside a customized leaning post and operate on your current battery system, making installation fast and easy. Watch for new product coming soon. The SeaKeeper for boats. Think about it. Eliminate up to 95% of boat roll on your boat. That is amazing. To learn more about how Seakeeper can change your life on the water and to schedule your free demo, go to Seakeeper.com. Take a ride. Be amazed. Seakeeper. Many years ago, Baja pioneer Bob Van Warmer found the area he called the Great Fish Trap in the East Cape of Southern Baja and built what is now regarded as the premier East Cape resorts of Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol. Today, following in their father's footsteps, Bob's sons, Bobby, Chucky, and Eddie, have taken Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol to new levels with the largest sport fishing fleet in Mexico, a luxurious spa, and top-of-the-line resort amenities. Van Warmer resorts have become a destination destination for travelers worldwide. But for us, Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol are just a short two-hour flight away. No other tropical fishing destination offers the experience and value that you'll find at Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol. Now you can plan your Baja fishing vacation quick and easy by visiting VanWarmerResorts.com. And when you're ready to book, it's quick and easy. Or simply call 877-777-TUNA for more information. Van Warmer Resorts, the East Cape's finest. XEPRS 1090 AM Rosarito, Baja California. San Diego Sports Leader, the home of ESPN Radio, the Mighty 1090. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hook Up on the Mighty 1090. Talking to Al Q, talking fly fishing and more. You want to join us? Have a chance to win this custom fly with uh, come fly with me T-shirt that Al Q designed, along with an amazing handmade Anza fillet knife. The ultimate filet knife, courtesy of Anza Knives, 858-457-1090 or 877-792-1090. Time for the catch part. Today it's sponsored by Terrafin. Focus your offshore fishing on the best areas by using Terrafin charts. Temperature, chlorophyll, and more. Terrafin is the professional choice for dependability and accuracy. Now with Terrafin Mobile, you can download the latest charts on your iPad, your iPhone, or your Android device. Take it with you wherever you go. Check Terrafin.com for more details. And let's start at Dana War Sport Fishing. Captain Brian Woolley. Good morning, Brian. Hey, good morning, guys. How are you this morning? Great. What's going on at Dana Wharf? Man, great week up here. We had uh, some nice weather all week. You know, a little bit of wind on Monday, but shoot, real nice week weather-wise for us, for sure. With that being said, uh, you know, our three-quarter day trips right now, we're, uh, you know, still solely pretty much fishing that deep hard bottom for rockfish. Some good action this week. There has been an enormous amount of bays, like huge area of anchovy, or excuse me, sardine and mackerel down in that deep water that we've been fishing. So the fish is moving around a lot from day to day, you know, from one little edge of the hard bottom to the next. So it's been a little tricky 
finding it from day to day, but when we get on it, it's been biting pretty darn good. So the dropper loop bait and the jigs have been the ticket. Same as the last few weeks, man, that 100-gram Colt Sniper is just the moneymaker out there, and it has been for sure. Good mixed rockfish from the bag for plenty of days, so that's, uh, you know, our three-quarter day stuff. As for the half day, the water along the beach has been fluctuating a bit from, like, 62 to 65. So the surface action, you know, it's, it's been a bit tricky. Dropper loop baits, though, have been the way to go, either squid or sardine for the sand bass and the calico bass. And some of our passengers like to bring uh, clam and shrimp, and that's uh, paid off real well for the sheephead and, and stuff like that there on the bottom. And finally, on our halibut front, you know, we did see a few more fish make the leaderboard this week. Nothing huge, but still plenty of opportunity to fish, uh, you know, for fish to find their way onto that uh, derby leaderboard. So, you know, for where we're at on the calendar, it pretty much sums up our week. You know, good rock fishing, a little tight action on the coast, but still plenty of stuff to catch. So, if you guys want to hop on a trip with us, give the landing a call. The phone number here is 949-496-5794. Of course, check us out on the web at danawarf.com. Also, use the discount code. You'll find right there on the front of the Let's Talk Cookup webpage. And finally, for this month of December, I know I mentioned it two weeks ago, kids fish free with a full fare paid adult all month. I think it's up to two the, kids, actually. The, so The whole so, month, every day of the week? Every day of the week. Wow. So, up to two kids fare. with a full fare adult. Exactly. Full oh, fare, bring your two take kids, kid come fishing. Some fish. So, yeah, exactly. no kidding. Well, Brian, great. You people do so much for kids there and so much for the community. Uh, Dana Wharf's Wire Fishing. Thank you for all that, and we'll talk to you next Sunday. All right, guys. Thanks for coming. See you. All right. Appreciate that very much. Let's go to the surf. Gundy Gunderson, <clears throat> surf guru extraordinaire. What's up, Gundy? Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey, we're talking fly fishing in the surf today. Oh, cool. Yeah. Cool. That's, uh, you know, there's uh, a lot more success in that than a lot of people realize. Hey. It's kind of like it's it's a vast place to be fly fishing, but boy, it can be real productive. Can, and right now, I can tell you this: I've had better success with a fly rod in my hand in the surf than with a conventional rod in the hand. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I it just seems they like those flies, right, Al? Yeah, yeah they absolutely. do. Yeah. And right now, we got the perch on the bite. I got some great reports here, and that's that's just a great. If you want to learn how to fly fish in the surf, that's a great training wheel fish right there, man. Lots of numbers. You get on a school of them, you can catch quite a few of them. Not a bad week of fishing. Highliner, like I said, was a perch bite up north, starting to see some of those real nice quality fish, that Ventura Oxnard, you know, the traditional big perch grounds. Also some decent halibut action mixed in with the cooler water here. No, you know, no big wipeout storms, and I think we're going to have Santa Ana this week, so things should hold up pretty well. We're going to get a, the water will clean up and stuff. Uh, hook, line, sinker reported. Uh, good bar perch fishing on several beaches up there, grubs, gulp baits, lugworms, all working well. East Beach was one of the hot spots. Uh, Galita, Carpinteria, some of those traditional spots. Wiley's held an uptown derby yesterday, and here's the kicker. Two-pound, ten-ounce perch takes the derby. Uh, those guys are good. Uh, the fish ate a, a go shrimp. The other guys were fishing with Lucky Craft, you know, so these guys are looking for big fish, and uh, a lot of the fish were right at around a pound and a half, one pound, real nice quality fish, so real encouraging as we go into winter here. Uh, just fishing in Redondo reported a mix of Bonita, Firecracker, Yellowtail, cruising in and around the harbor there. The guys are throwing uh, feather and bubble combos, you know, a blue and white feather on the back there, something like that. And then small spoons also working like the little mega baits. Big fish and still be supported improved perch action there at Bolsa Chica. Uh, anglers fishing bloodworms are taking perch to a pound and a half, some nice sargo in the mix. And then good halibut bite along shoreline drive there. The guys are using, making, and then using the live smelt. Pacific Coast reported good halibut bite along North County Beach is there. Uh, a shop regular stuck three legal fish Friday. That's another fish that will eat the fly there, the halibut. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was real good tide movement. And uh, the lagoon and jetty mouse have been the key there with that good tide movement. Lots of water moving, some bait in there, and that's what the guys have been looking at. And also uh, in one of those uh, dog beach, that's right there at the mouth of, uh, of the river mouth, a uh, seven-pound striped bass taken this week. Ooh. Too. All those things will eat the fly there, Pete. Yeah, especially that striped bass, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I tell you, we've had striped bass at Dog Beach there in Del Mar for, oh, 
almost two months straight of uh, fish a week. So, you know, that's, that's still waters there, too. That's a good place to try to catch one. Al? It, it's, it's, it's crazy, but even down south in San Diego, the, uh, and we, uh, one guy got six of them on a Lucky Craft uh, about a week ago. So the stripe, the stripe, the stripe is yeah. up and down. Yep. Yeah, I think this is the most striped bass we've seen in the surf in several years, you know, and maybe it has something to do with all that all that rain we got, you know, this spring. Yeah, they like that uh, that that mix of salt and fresh water for sure. Yeah, that's, that's cool, it. Gundy. That's what a great report, Gundy Gunderson, our surf guru extraordinaire. Sure appreciate all you do. We'll talk to you next Sunday. Yeah, good show. I like the subject matter, Pete. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it is good. All right, thanks, all right, Gundy. Have a good week. Yeah, gentlemen. you too. See you later. Hey, that. Report sponsored in part by SurfFishTackle.com, where you'll find all the gear you'll need to catch fish at the beach. That's SurfFishTackle.com. And while I'm at it, of course, Bill Varney, who does our uh, newsletter every uh, other week, uh, is is the guy from SurfFishTackle.com, and he does a fantastic job with our newsletter. Sign up for our, our, uh, our newsletter every other week. We send you a blast, just great information and good information. And just go to our website, letstalkhookup.com, and uh, just put your email address in there, and we'll send it to you every other week. We don't sell it. We don't uh, distribute it. We just use it for our purposes every other week. That's it for sure. And you have uh, a, a blog. We talked about it earlier. Yeah, yeah. I do. And, and you can kind of stay in touch with that. Um, easy way to find it would be? It's... Um Al, it's www.alquatrochi, uh, spell it, Q-U-A-T-T-R-O-C-C-H-I dot wordpress dot com. Dot wordpress dot com. And then you can find, you can kind of kind of ask you questions. Yeah, and, you can throw questions up there. I'll answer any, any questions you have. There you go. All right, let's go ahead and jump into those phone lines. They're packing up, 877-792-1090, the only line available right now. Cliff and Lakewood, you're next up on Let's Talk Hook Up. Good morning. Hi, dude. How are you guys doing this morning? Great. Great. Hey, I, uh, I love that Springer knot that I learned. Uh, I've been tying that all week on, and that's a small knot, and I love it. I love the double uh, line going through there. That's ah. my favorite now instead of the San Diego Jam. It's a, it's a good one, yeah, and it's easy. Oh, yeah, very easy. Uh, I had a question about the casting on fly fishing. Is it mostly vertically, or can you go ho- a little horizontal on that, uh, maybe to get around objects or avoid obstructions, especially those nasty bushes behind you? <laughs> yeah, you, you know the the stroke is the same regardless of which way you go, whether whether it's a, a parallel to the ground or above your head. It's it's the same. It's a st- it's going to be a speed up and stop type of a stroke, and it's it, it the the length of the stroke will determine also the the length of the line you're going to throw. So, um, it the technique is the same. It's just a matter of how you angle your rod to deliver the fly. A big thing up in the Pacific Northwest in freshwater is a spay rod. Do guys use spay rods in saltwater? Absolutely. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, it, there's a lot of two-handed rods now. Okay. That, that guys like to, if, especially if there's obstructions behind people, mm-hmm. they can throw a nice long roll cast and, and throw, you know, 70, 80 feet in front of them. Which would be a good thing for some of the spots, like against cliffs or exactly. rocks. Or, or something high, like high, but high, something high behind you, like, yeah, like a cliff. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a little more complicated of a cast, but how long is a spay rod? The spay rods can be 12, 14 feet long. Yeah, long rods, right? Yeah. Do you throw a spay rod? I don't. I use a traditional nine-foot yeah. single single rod. Yeah. Your go-to, you're going calico fishing, your go-to rig, you're grabbing. What is it? Give us a... If I'm going big calico, I'm going at least a 10 or 11 weight Wow, rod. that big. Yeah, because I'm not playing around. You yeah. know what I mean, I, don't, I want to land a big fish. I'm going to put some heat on them. Yeah. Um, and, I, you know, I would fish probably a 300, 350 grain okay. line. Any particular brand that you prefer? Uh, I did, there's so many great fly rods yes. out there today, but I, I I fish sage rods. Sage rods, yeah, yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah. yeah, no doubt about it. Yeah, but like you say, sager are high end rods. It's you can end. buy a Reddington or a, or, or some, what's the one that? There's uh, nothing wrong with a Reddington rod yeah. or Echo or yeah. Uh, yeah, they're all great. That's Temple Temple uh, Temple Fork, Fork. yeah, that's rods. the ones that. Uh, Lefty, uh, uh, Lefty, and, and 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 also uh, Nick, uh, Nick Kershion. That's yeah. correct. Those They're, are all great rods. Yeah. yeah, and those are much more reasonable. Absolutely, yeah. much more affordable. Yeah, and, and and it's 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 a matter of just getting used to doing the, the what you need to do with that. Particular you just got, you really want to take some lessons and learn how to cast because once you learn how to cast, then it becomes fun. Yeah. It really does, and it takes it takes the mystery out of it. It takes the, the danger out of it. Yeah. 
Um, that's it's what, not that hard. It isn't that hard. It's, yeah. it, I mean, I, me and my buddy Jim or any other great ca- good casting instructors, I'm, I'm not a great casting instructor. My, my, my friend Jim is. If you if we could we could get a person for an hour and really get them casting, yeah, I mean, that, that's how long it'll take to do it. No matter where you are, like uh, Lakewood, you'd probably send them out to the the spot out in Van Nuys would be a good spot. Or actually, you're right near um, you, you, uh, his and hers. Frank Selby's amazing teacher, right? Yeah, yeah all, the, all all the fly yeah. shops have good instructors. Yeah, you know, and and we do we do some classes as well. And a lot of times, if you go to the fly shops, um, they'll give you a first lesson for free. Yeah, because they want to hook you. And the other thing about what's great about going to a fly shop is you get to try different rods. Yeah, you know they have all the different manufacturers, so you have to try the things that that are going to work for you. And then if you want to go to the next level, you go to the fly zone. Well, yeah, I think yeah. If, when you're That's ready, you guys. Yeah, I mean, if you want to take it up a notch, we 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 don't just talk about the casting. We talk about physical therapy. We talk about staying in shape. We talk about tackle. We talk about lot lots of other things. Yeah, yeah. and you teach people. You, will you? Also talk to people about if they want to catch a record calico, if they want to catch Absolutely. a record sea bass, yeah. they want to I catch could, something I could, offshore, inshore. We could explain all about the IGF rules and how to how to be IGFA and all that stuff. Yeah, very Absolutely. good. All right, Cliff, thanks a lot for the phone call this morning. And when we come back, more of your phone calls, more with Al Q, more fish talk right here on Let's Talk Hook Up, Southern California's sport fishing voice on the Mighty 1090. Are you feeling that itch to get out on the water? Come fishing on the American Angler and reacquaint yourself with some familiar faces and make new friends. Captain owners Brian Kiyohara and Sam Patella take pride in every aspect of the American Angler operation, from their loyal and trusted crew to the sashimi-grade fresh fish you'll take home. It's easy to find a vacation that fits your schedule. We have everything from day and a half to 10-day trips and longer. Call me at the office. 619-223-5414 or check us out at AmericanAnglerSportFishing.com We want you to become a part of the American Angler family. Here's John Ireland for Rancho Leonero. Rancho Leonero was awarded the Certificate of Excellence from TripAdvisor for four straight years. Especially interesting, most hotels are just hotels and most people stay in the hotel and go do their activities elsewhere. Rancho Leonero, of course, provides fishing, diving, all activities, all meals, your whole vacation, so the fact that we're so highly rated, we're very proud of it. From picking you up at the airport to dropping you off, literally everything is a turnkey from there. We make it as easy as we can for you at the ranch. From your meals to whether you're going to go fishing or diving or just hang out by the pool. When you're coming to Rancho Lanier, you are coming to John Ireland's home. I guarantee the best fishing vacation experience in all of Baja. It's unique. There's nowhere that I can think of to get the same experience that you get at Rancho Lanier. Our new reservation phone number is 800-646-2252, 646-Baja. And RanchoLanero.com, it's really unique. It is. We're very proud of it. When it comes to catching big bluefin tuna in local waters, Shimano has the gear proven to land the big ones. You already know the hot jig is the Shimano Butterfly Flatfall Jig. And when you match that with the right tackle system, it makes this great jig even more effective. We suggest you grab a Tranks 500 HG and fill it with 80-pound Power Pro Max Quattro. Max Quattro is 25% thinner, which means 25% more line capacity when you hook that giant. Match your new setup with a Therese 70H and you have the power. Power to put the wood to that big blue fin tuna. The Tranks 500 HG has the cranking power you need. And with the level wind, you concentrate on fishing your Shimano flatball and leave the line control to the Tranks reel. Hundreds of big fish have been caught on the flatball. And when you add the Power Pro Max Quattro Tranks Terez combo, you'll take your fishing to the next level. See your local dealer or check Shimano.com for all the details. XFRS 1090 AM Rosarito, Baja California. San Diego Sports Leader, the home of ESPN Radio, the mighty 1090. Fisherman's Landing is the top choice in local and long-range fishing. Our hard-working crew is always looking for ways to improve your fishing experience. We offer the finest open party trips from one to three days, the best charter boats available, and of course, our world-renowned long-range fleet. Fisherman's Landing is a full-service sport fishing operation offering great half-day and three-quarter day trips. Book online at Fisherman'sLanding.com. I'll see you at Fisherman's Landing in San Diego. Fisherman's Landing is the top choice in local and long-range fishing. Hi, this is Doug Kern. Our hard-working crew is always looking for ways to improve your fishing experience. We offer the finest open party trip from one to three days, the best charter boats available, and of course, our world-renowned long-range fleet is second to none. 
Fishermen. We are proud to say Fisherman's Landing is now a full-service sport fishing operation, offering half-day trips on the Dolphin, and now, for the first time in the long history of Fisherman's Landing, we have three-quarter day open party trips on the Liberty. We built the Liberty specifically to offer a better experience. Run by veteran captain Taro Takeuchi, the 85-foot Liberty is the first open party three-quarter day boat to offer bunks for your comfort. She also has huge bait capacity and RSW fish holds to keep your catch fresh. Plus, Liberty has a big galley and two interior heads with showers. Our open party trips from half day, three quarter day, or one to three day trips can be easily booked online at Fisherman'sLanding.com or give us a call at 619-221-8500. I'll see you at Fisherman's Landing in San Diego. Who's going to be more successful? The guy with a state-of-the-art fish finder and the latest sonar technology? Or the guy who wastes time looking for fish the old-fashioned way? Smart fishermen know how to embrace technology. And no one understands technology better than your San Diego County Ford dealer. The new F-150 is the only truck available with Pro Trailer Backup Assist. The most advanced, most efficient way to back a trailer ever. It's just one of many high-tech features you won't find on any other truck. Ford is also the only brand available with EcoBoost, a twin turbocharged engine that offers impressive fuel economy without sacrificing power. In other words, Ford trucks just flat out work smarter. So whether you're on the road or on the water, don't let technology pass you by. Come in now and get a clearance price on a new high-tech 2017 F-Series pickup. Visit your nearest San Diego County Ford dealer today, Ford. That's California smart. Learn more at buyfordnow.com. 